The other tool that we're going to use to analyze nonlinear systems are the null clines. Literally, the curves where there's null inclination in dx dt or dy dt, or in plain English, the curves where dx dt is equal to zero or dy dt is equal to zero separately. Use a competing species model again. And you know how this factors. Two factors for dx dt and two factors for dy dt. Equilibrium point is the place where both of these are zero at the same time. And we know that there are four equilibrium points for the system. You can examine that. But how about just where dx dt is zero? That happens when x is zero or when x plus y is two. Those are called the x null clines where dx dt is zero. The y null clines are the curves where dy dt is 0. y equals 0 or 2x plus y equals 3. Now here the x null clines and the y null clines are physical lines. That doesn't have to be the case, but here they're lines. Now the two null clines x equals 0 and y equals 0. I've marked these in examples before. These are like phase lines. We see the capacity of the population y is at 3, the capacity of the population x is at 2, and if x was not 0, y would grow to 3 if its population was less than 3, and decay to 3 if its population was more than 3. So it's like a phase line here on the y-axis. On the x-axis, if there was no y present, x would grow to 2 if it were below 2, and decay to 2 if it were above. That's the behavior on the axes. But what about these two lines? x plus y equals 2, intercepts 2 and 2, and 2x plus y equals 3, y intercept of 3, and x intercept of 1 and a half. I can test physical points on these lines. Test points on these lines. The x null clime, x plus y equals 2. dx dt is 0, so Solutions have a tendency to move no amount of distance in the x direction. It can only move up or down in the y direction. You can test the point like one half and one and a half, and you see the flow is upwards. You could test a point like one and a half and one half, and you see the flow is downwards. Likewise, pick sample points on the line 2x plus y equals 3 and above the equilibrium point 1 1 you see that the tendency is to flow left and below the equilibrium point of 1 1 then the tendency is to flow right well just adding these arrows indicating flow tells us a lot more about the system if you write the four regions you've cut up here in the first quadrant a b c and d for these little slivers well, you see that every solution that begins in A has to exit A. No solutions can stay inside A. And they'll either go down into D or go left into C. Likewise, any solution that starts in B doesn't stay in B. It's likely going to go up into region C or right into region D. Any solution that's in region C, once it comes into region C, well, it's going to flow up and to the left. It's going to flow to that equilibrium at 0, 3. And any solution that enters D or starts in D is going to flow right and down to the equilibrium at 2, 0. You also notice that 0, 0 is a source using the Jacobian. And 1, 1, we've already tested this in a previous example, it's like a saddle using the Jacobian again. Theoretically, I could start in region B and just float to the 1, 1 point, but that'd be a very unstable equilibrium. Likewise, from region A, I could float to the 1, 1 point, but that again would be an unstable equilibrium. I've described the flow of most solutions with these arrows.